So it's six o'clock. I'd like to open up the meeting. Um, and first item on the agenda is, uh, are there any adjustments to the select board agenda? I've got nothing. Okay, I don't really have anything either. Um, uh, any public comment at all? Any questions or comments anybody wants to make? Okay, don't hear any. Um, so approving bills to the town, I guess we'll do that by signing them after the meeting. Um, so, uh, do I hear a motion to approve the minutes from the September 13th uh, select board meeting? So moved. Okay, and I guess I'll second it, and all those in favor? Aye. Aye, okay. Um, so, town clerk's report. I um, reached out to the animal film officer, Kim, about yeah. um, going on land that is posted. Mm -hmm. And he said that he learned in his training that he took from Leagues of Cities and Forms, if you remember that. And he says he has the same jurisdiction, jurisdiction whatever you want to call it, as a regular police officer does. Right. So he is able to go across the mm -hmm. post pavilion to leave his little ticket saying your dog's not in compliance. Right. And he was, he, I spoke to him about this also, um, or he brought it up when I was talking about the, our horse problem in town. And um, he mentioned that um, he was responding to a neighbor's call about dogs barking. And that's why he was on the property. He was following the sound of the dogs barking. Um, yeah. And that he, you know, he told me the same thing that um, as an animal control officer, um, he has the right to, re you know, responding to a complaint to be on uh, property, whether it's posted or or, or not. So, yep. oh. okay. And then my other time I have spent um, reporting the land records. Mm -hmm. I have up to date until Randy gave me the mail today. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> yeah. So as long as the mail doesn't Johnson. come in, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> and I am feeling comfortable enough with doing the town clerk's position that I've put Diana down to one day a week. Okay, perfect. And she said that she would be on call if I needed her other than that one day. Mm -hmm. Okay, sounds good. Yep. So that's what I have. Okay, all right. Um, any questions at all for no, Rod? No. no. So, town treasurer's report. <clears throat> so for the last two weeks, um, payroll was 10000 $795.46 in gross. Accounts payable warrant for today is $55,364.11. Electronic transfers in the last two weeks, very small. Uh, 107 dollars for traffic fines mm -hmm. for August. Um, cash receipts. Totaled $126,096.74. Land records, property tax payments. Um, copies at cost, uh, certified copies, marriage license, land posting, town hall rentals, and vault fees. Delinquent taxes took an end was $2,416.17. Um, and I transferred the last two weeks 155000 even over into the money market. Mm -hmm. Okay. And as you can notice on your balance sheet, we're at a negative, and that's just because I have a deposit to do and I don't want to take money out of the money market. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I still have checks that haven't been signed yet. So. Mm -hmm. All our fault. Um, I just had, and I think this might be related to the um, school insurance question that you asked me um, just before we open the meeting. Um, yep. I did see the thing from Passive, and um, and was that related to the school insurance? Yeah. yeah. If you look on the second page, it says um, oh, right. school slash boiler, boiler slash yeah. Something. Yeah. So, so that's okay. strictly just for the school. What I did was I. Get out of the um, 
number 15 fund, which is the mm -hmm. school, mm -hmm. and we'll get reimbursed. Okay, yeah. So it'll be a wash at the end of yeah. the year. So do, does passive send the town like a quarterly? Yes, so we'll that's just... why I was asking if it was quarterly or yeah. annually yeah. to ask for reimbursement on that. Yeah. Um, and I can, I can talk with Brittany okay. and see if she wants it. I think it would be cleaner quarterly mm -hmm. in and out just like we do for the fire department. Right. Um, I, yeah. th I think there is some wording to that effect in the lease, but I can't, re I can't remember. I'd have to look at it yeah. and see. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then uh, just one other question with the bills, and I think, Chuck, probably you could answer this um, as well. I noticed a bill from Munson Earth Moving Corporation for the 2013 Freightliner. Was that more for the body? No, nope, that was a hydraulic cylinder that was rebuilt for the plow. Okay, for the plow. So it is kind of connected to the, the yeah. attachments. Yeah. That's what I thought. So that's why I was not sure of the voice. That, right. That okay. So would you rather have that under the vehicle or under, don't we have a plows and... Well, yeah, we do have it under both. Um, but is that and, a bracket that's on the... So it's, it's a high balance cylinder that was rebuilt. The ram was bad in it. They put so it's it not like if you take off the, the plow... Was it an angle or a lift cylinder? With the plow? Lift. Oh, was that part of the truck, so... Mm -hmm. Well, it's part of the headgear. Yeah, the head gear bolted to the off. truck though, right? No, no, it's not. Okay. 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 So okay. If you want me to change that? I th I think we should connect it to the to to the actual vehicle. How how do you feel about that, Chuck? I mean, that is related to that particular <coughs> vehicle as far as a yeah. Repair. But if you stick the truck is no good without it. Yeah. So, but can you put it on another vehicle? Right. So it's safe. Yeah. Trade the truck and still have the plow. Yeah. The plow can go on another. Yeah. Vehicle. All right. Let's separate it. Yeah. yeah. Is that, the, is that well, what the policy is going to be? Do we keep the plow and put it on the truck? I have no well, idea. We have to figure plow, that out. You know, the, I can't remember what's budgeted for the plows, but that was more like uh, replacing a blade or like a... Because we have like a line for plows. I mean, for, yeah, for plows. I think it's plow. So, was it for plow repair, not plow purchase, right? We usually purchase the plow with the truck. Right. Yeah. So I myself would put it under the truck. Yeah, that's my... Unless it was repair parts for the plow. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, yeah, I mean, it does relate to... The truck on the plow is good with that. Correct. Right, yeah. you can, you got to have it. I'm not going to help. I'm going to be down there saying it's soft. I'm going to be trying to go visit him. I got a long time. Every chance I get. Those, that's, those are my two questions. I'm, oh, yeah. yeah. And we're going to ask some more, too. The, the cylinders on the lift body for the standards mm -hmm. are bad on at least one truck, maybe both. Okay, yeah. But it'll be Munson's and it'll be the same deal. Okay, great. Yeah. yeah. Where, where are they based? Burlington. Burlington. Williston, actually. Williston, okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Shut up, I grow. Yeah, no, that's to be expected. Getting, getting ready for winter. Yeah. And they got some time on. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any questions for Brandy at all? Okay. Treasurer's report. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, town highway report. All right. Well, this question is for Brandy. To you, I don't know which okay. is which, but if we're getting real close to finishing up on the cabaret mm -hmm. with the man. Yep. And Greg Parker is playing pretty hard about shutting down and getting ready for winter. Uh-huh. First of October. Yep. Now, are we going to set on all this money we spent, or is there some way that we can reclaim this, or how does this work? Because for two or three days' work, I'm not going to let it happen if we're going to set on it for six months. I would, I mean, personally, I would prefer that the, the project be finished. I want the project to get done, too. Yeah. I mean, two or three days' worth of work. Um, so. Go ahead, Brandon. It would all depend on the grant. So, to, some grants 
like the FEMA grant, we could have we could do it in sections, get money back in sections, so we're not in a hole. Um, but yeah, I think this one we got to finish it, and then we can file. Yeah, yeah. that's. I haven't argued with them yet, but I want to give them a ducks in a row before I start it. Yeah. Yeah. So I, we will. It I'll should finish. be getting there done this week. So it's only going to be two or three days next week, and but it is first October, and he thinks. We didn't shut down and just well, want to finish. If there, yeah, if there's just um, a, a few days. The gravel was all done, the whole length. Uh, the ditching, we've got about, what to say, three, four hundred feet left on this end by the wind press stops. Mm -hmm. And that will be complete, so we will finish that. Mm -hmm. um, I use gravel trucks. We we've, uh, resurface the whole length of the Cranberry Meadow Road. Uh, half of the King Farm Road. Uh, so that person can drive faster now on that road. Well, yeah, and they yeah. are. <laughs> and they are. Uh, we've got a lot of work done this year. Yeah, you have. You have amazing um, Well, and I want you guys to start thinking about this. This is what happens when you don't have to have one person de designated and one truck designated to home and sand all the time. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So when you get ready to do your budget, we need to talk about this a little bit. Budget some trucking. Sure. Yeah. Um, when are you planning on heading south? When am I? Yeah. Oh, somewhere around 1st December. Okay, so... That could change, you know, whatever. We should really work out the highway, as much as we can while you're here, we should work out the highway budget before you're gone. Um, so we might start work on that part of the budget in November. Okay. Um, it would be good to have your, I mean, we probably, hopefully we won't be doing Zoom meetings where you could kind of connect right. no matter where you were, but... Um, right. I think it would be good for us to um, to maybe have some sense of what work might be done next summer, and what work um, you know whether we wanted to try for different grants. Um, there'll be the work. Um, there's one grant that um, you know we basically got a notification of. It was kind of a surprise to me that because we never really applied for it. It's the grants and aid. Um, for working on sections of road that are hydroelectrically connected through the municipal roads general permit. We, really? we have this money that basically um, is there for us to use. We wouldn't be able to um, you know, utilize that grant next spring um, before the end of the fiscal year, so till the end of June. So we might want to think of a, a section of road um, that's hydroelectrically connected. Um, you know, if you gave well, me a- if we get to if we get the survey done on Winston Hills Hill, there we should be cutting trees and getting rid of the stones. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. If it's going to be a grant, I mean, what better place to stack than right Yeah, there? it's $14,800. I don't know if that would cover, that would cover some of that. Um, it would cover quite a lot of it. And, but the, the thing that just puts a question mark in, in my head is that so far that's not an established road that they've established as hydrologically connected, even though... It, no. But it could be our solution to the hydro, hydraulically connected hill. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We can ask. So, yeah. And, and I'm not sure now that the Regional Planning Commission isn't involved in kind of looking at and suggesting how the work proceed on the project, who actually does that anymore. So I'll try to find that out. But, um, you know, if we have an idea of, of projects that you would want to do next summer or have the road crew do, um, you know, I mean, this year we did have a road. We had planned on doing it, and we were lucky that, um, you know, VTrans offered us that grant. Um, right. Of course, we didn't budget for that, but... Um, our, our percentage, I think, will still be able to cover that oh, yeah. uh, one way or the other. Um, so those kind of... This has been a good deal. Yeah. yeah. All the way around. Yeah. Three by the ground. Mm -hmm. 
and yeah. the work has gotten done. Yeah, and having and, the both of the grant pay for it, yeah. Yes, and that's another question I've got, is around, we've got around 1,200 yards left out there. Mm -hmm. And without hiring trucks, we're not going to lay down this year. Mm -hmm. Do you still want to, are they willing to store it out there for us, or? They are, but they won't guarantee that it'll be there in spring. Okay. Then we'll have to be able to, we'll I think to we it. should get it here. Yeah, yeah, okay. I think and we I should get to, it here. I hate to bring it in and stop on it. I'd like to put it on the road and be done with it when we're doing it. That's mm -hmm. what I would do. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's the most efficient, because they can spread it. It right is. There. Yep. I mean, we worked hard to save the money on the gravel. It'd be too bad to have to truck it out of hand, stop on it, and then truck it off again. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I'd just, I would just you know, it. you'd have to talk to Greg about his October 1st deadline, because um, that would well, be, that would mean more work, at least for some. Yeah, well, two. hopefully, oh, uh, I won't say anything. <laughs> okay, I'll say it. I think, I think you've got enough time to do both. Okay. We do. Yeah, that's my opinion. If I can hire trucks, we got plenty of Yeah, them. yeah, mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. And I think we have the money to hire trucks. We do. So. It's just a matter of making a decision to put the, put the time on it. That's it. Yeah, I mean, but I, I didn't want to go ahead and just do it. I'm good with that. About all no, I, I, I'm good with that. Yeah, yeah I'm I good to go. This, right. this, this little group agrees that we should get as much done as we can now. Okay. And use, use that material. Plus we paid for all the gravel already, so. Yeah. Right. And exactly. And now try it twice. It's good stuff. Twice. It's real good stuff. It's hanging good. Mm -hmm. okay. um, also, I've been uh, approached from the people that live up in Hogtown, and they definitely got a complaint up there. We got to go up there and do something with culvert. Uh -huh. And it really needs another culvert put in above. Mm -hmm. So, sometime in October, we're going to have one there. Okay. Yeah. That won't be a serious amount of money. It'll be just yeah. getting up there and doing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess that's about all I got. Uh -huh. um, did you ever get a hold of Stephen Frazier um, up on the far end of the North Road about some gravel? Yes. Yeah. He was okay with that? He hasn't come back to me. I told okay. him we would bring it up mm -hmm. and Dump it in a pile, but he was going to be responsible for putting it in place. Yeah, I know. I know when we bring the gravel to the camp owners on East Long, um, you know, on the which is also the North Road. Right. Um, they have the, a tractor with a bucket loader that they've spread it with, it, and it has a rake too. So I don't know. Uh, maybe maybe I'll try to get a hold of. I know Steve, and I could just suggest that he might want to try to dovetail work on that section of the road um, with the camp owners that, that do that work. Um, you might be able to, I don't know. Yeah, it wouldn't uh, happen until the spring or summer of next right. year. But, uh. um, also, uh, Patrick Flood mm -hmm. said something about he'd like some gravel up in there mm -hmm. for his road. Okay. For Logtown Road? Yeah, they're in Logtown. Yeah. Oh, this, uh, right? The East Long, oh. I mean the Cranberry River Cranberry Center. Meadows, Cranberry Meadows, 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 Meadows. Okay. Yeah. Long Town. Okay. Up on his road there, I guess it's class four at Cranberry River. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. You want to send him along up there? Yep. Sure. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. Other than that, I guess that's about all I got. Okay. Any, no, any good. Thank questions you, Chuck. for Chuck at all? No. Okay, um, on to the horse issue. Um, so, I can give a little background on this. Um, I have some notes somewhere. Anyway, um, we have a, a property owner, a new property owner up on um, Old Quarry Road, who at present lives in Callis um, and has four horses um, that basically um, she has moved from the property that she has in Callis to the property that she has in Woodbury. 
Um, <clears throat> and they've been running around town quite a bit. There is a fence there. Um, I did talk to Kim Silk, and I'll share a little bit more of that conversation in a moment, but uh, there is a fence uh, to keep the horses in, but um, it's not working very well, obviously. Um, she doesn't believe in fences. And basically, yeah, uh, she doesn't believe in fences. I had a but, nice conversation with her yesterday. Okay. Um, and this has been a problem in Calais for a few years now. Um, with the same person. They, same just, person. they just signed this ordinance on 721. Yeah, and same, yeah. same uh, horses, same person. <laughs> Um, so I did speak with uh, Wilson Hughes, who is the town constable and also the animal control officer um, about the situation. And, um, and you're right, um, basically the town of Callis, you know, kind of got to a lot of dead ends on what to, how to deal with this situation after the horses have caused quite a bit of damage to other people's um, property. Um, and so they wrote up a... a What's how, how do they term it? Um, a large I animal. Okay, yeah. Before. I printed two by accident. Uh, how to regulate or an ordinance to regulate livestock running at large. Um, so um, that is one step that the town could take, and, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, so Wilson uh, mentioned that um, this person is pretty much impossible to get a hold of, which has been uh, my experience so far. I've been trying to get a hold of this person. Um, Kim Silk did have a conversation with her, and it sounds like you did, did too. too. Um, but, you know, I've been calling her, um, and, you know, obviously nobody ever answers the phone, and there doesn't seem to be a means for leaving a message. Um, and I know there's an issue. Wilson told me that, um, you know, in the email that Brandy sent out, um, there was a concern about a, a disease that horses can get called Strangles disease, which is kind of a respiratory disease. Um, and uh, Wilson mentioned that there's only one horse of the group that has that disease and that it was pretty much contained. So there, he didn't really think there was uh, much concern about them being contagious to uh, other, other animals. And I think it's mostly dogs that they Strangely enough, they can um, contract. Humans can't get it. So, um, can they be vaccinated for that? I don't know. Because if not, why aren't the other three horses that are right there in the same little home? I don't know. I don't know. No. It is a contagious disease, so um, I don't know why the one has it and the others haven't gotten it. Um, so, um, and there was a neighbor uh, up towards the top of the old Quarry Road, Cabot Road, that did call the state police um, about this. And the state police, basically, um, their take on this is that um, the town doesn't have an ordinance to enforce, um, so there's not much they can do that way. And um, according to the state vet and the agriculture department, um, the state does not deal with large animals. It's a town issue. Um, so, and I can explain that a little bit more um, uh, in, in just a moment. So, we, so the situation is, is that we have a new property owner who has moved their horses from Callis, um, where there's been a long history of problems with these horses, to Woodbury. Now we and have. now we're beginning our own uh, legacy in, in the uh, saga. Um, so, um, I did talk to um, a woman named Caitlin Levine. She's the assistant uh, state vet in the agricultural department. She's the one that told me that free ranging of large animals is a town concern and not a state concern. She did tell me that the town can impound the animals without the need of having an ordinance. Um, we could only do that if they were off their property. Um, I mean, we couldn't go on to the land. I'd be careful of that because she threatened me yesterday and she threatened a few other people. Okay. Um, so we need to. Well, she looked in my truck and said, You better not touch my horses and stuck her finger in my face. Uh -huh. And I just, she approached me and I'm like, ah, Not yeah. planning on touching your horses. <laughs> yeah. She said, You better not touch my horses. So, um, you know, uh, we can. So we can. Yeah. 
we can impound them. They, they, I know Callus tried to do something like that, and um, I think the animal control officer actually got hurt by one of the horses. Well, they're big. Um, and uh, one of the horses has also kicked a yeah, I would, uh, dog and killed it. So. Not advise touching the animals because yeah. we've had a run in with some previous horses and it can be quite dangerous. Yeah. So, and of course, I talked to Kim Silk about this, and, and of course, so the question is, well, if we did want to do that, who's going to do it, and then where are you going to impound them? We, we um, went through this a year yeah. and a half ago when the horses got loose, somebody got hit, killed the horse, and we had two of them yeah. staked down here, and we didn't know what to do with them, <laughs> yeah. just until someone volunteered to take them until we found the owner. Yeah. So it's a big issue. Um, so Kim, um, Kim Silk did get to talk to the owner. Um, Said he had a good conversation, and um, she was um, uh, pretty adamant that she would fix the fence and that this wouldn't happen again. But of course, it did happen uh, yesterday. So, um, and Gary sent some great photos of the horses uh, walking down Route 14 um, down by Hattie Bell Road. Um, they went the whole distance from here down there. Uh, from right from, right from the end the of the Blake yeah. Hill Road. Yeah. 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 Yeah, because they were. Yeah, they went. They were down by my house, right down the other road, right down the yeah. Yeah. So they were, they were, and his road house right there to prove that they were there. Yeah, they were on the road. Yeah, they were. They were. They were. They were, they were, they were, they were up on our tracks here, part of the day. Yeah. So, so um, we can follow suit with Callis and pass this ordinance. Um, yeah, really I think you got it. That would be my preference. Well, I, my, my, so, uh, I mean, okay, so, so what is the what is the what is the negative about having a large animal ordinance? There's no well, I guess is it rule let me not? just I mentioned this to Kim. I just want to share what Kim said. So we can have an ordinance. Um, the catch is is the enforcement of it. Again, I know. Yeah, the the old, you know, what we always run up against. Um, so the ordinance that Cal has put together is pretty thorough. Um, but again, it, it, part of it includes impounding such livestock, um, blah, 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 impounded livestock. So it gives terms for that, and it's basically based on state statute, um, Title 20, Chapter 191, so Chapter 2, according to the uh, state vet. So we could do that. We could have an ordinance, but again, how do we enforce it? Well, the problem is we're going to have this in our I mean, I'll just share my conversation. I was okay. Listen to this oh, go ahead, yep. Then I'll share about what happened with me yesterday. I'm going to push back on the ordinance because, in my opinion, and I have some pretty dire things that mm -hmm. you're not just going to go grab a hold of it and go wherever you want. No, you're not. <laughs> I mean, my thing is my 800 pounds. Mm -hmm. So, 99.9% .9 of livestock owners don't want them getting out. I know. Well, yeah. Yeah. I know, I know, I know. And I, and I get this is a different situation, and you've made it quite clear that it's it's an isolated situation with one person. Mm -hmm. So that's how it needs to be dealt with by, with this one person. You don't need to put an ordinance in place for the other ninety nine point nine percent of people that are trying to do good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Sure. My sure. question to you would just be, how do you resolve this? Because the problem, <coughs> my conversation with her yesterday was, she came to me. I was at the firehouse working. And she just said, have you seen my horses? So no, I said, you, Elizabeth? She, yeah. And I said, wow. I said, you, you're creating quite a stir with these horses. I said, Let me, to, to condense the conversation, and she got mad at me and told me that she doesn't really believe in fences because she's afraid her field's going to get on fire and that the horses can't get out. So she doesn't, and if, she, if I thought that we were going to fence in her horses, this is when she got mad. So, so this is a problem we're dealing with. No, and I get that. But I you're don't. trying to impose something. Yeah, I, I agree with you, by the way. Yeah, I. That's not a problem. Right. And you know what? If my pigs get out, you know, I'm sorry. I'll pay you if they do some damage or something like that. But nine times out of ten, if a pig gets out or a horse gets out, it's just nobody's home. Yeah. Or they're yeah, hungry. Yeah, because yes. I, I do agree with you. I'm not a big fan of ordinances as a rule. But you know what? I have found out over the years the best way to hit somebody and get their attention. He's right in the pocket. Right, yeah. and that's Put a file on And that's what this ordinance would do. That's what this ordinance would do. We could all... What's that? We're not an ordinance, we don't get a file. Right, but I mean, a one time, like this guy here, with his 
fenced. I would never find somebody whose livestock that was fenced in yeah, that way. Yeah, just right. because it's, it's, it's fenced in. But if it's well, a little bit competitive, but you're talking about putting an ordinance in place that what if my pigs got out one day and then something happened where we lost power sure. and they figured out the fence weren't on and got out again. So am I going to get stuck with a fine because we lost no. power? No, you wouldn't. Get, you wouldn't. This is, this no, is. I get this as a pet, but it needs, I think it needs to be addressed in a way where you don't need to bring everybody else involved in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the, this case, they, Callus has dealt with this for two or three years. For yeah. years. No, I get that. Years, no, two just because Callus did doesn't mean we got new no, no. Callus did. So, I get that, but just, no Justin, other. a fine wouldn't happen if, unless the owner just kind of ignored it. Non compliance is where a fine comes in. So, there wouldn't be any fine. If your pigs got out and, um, you know, maybe the animal control officer was called or somebody called you and you got them back in, you're not going to get fined for that. It's if your pigs got out and went down into my garden and ate all of my uh, winter squash and I complained and you just said, oh, well, tough, whatever. Well, that's, that's, that's when, <laughs> and, then, and then we decided, and then the pigs got out again and, and rooted in somebody else's garden. It's um, a repeat offense problem. And then what the town would Without do effort. would impound them. And then if you, you, in order for that person to get those animals back, they would have to pay for the keeping of those animals in the pound. And in and, and, and this ordinance, there would be a fine um, for that also. So the, the whole kind of enforcement stuff comes after a, an owner pretty much decides that they don't give a hoot about what's happening and it's somebody else's problem, not mine. And, and um, you know, so it's basically non-compliance with uh, you know, keeping right. your animals on your property. I just believe that there's, there's other avenues that we need to look for right. before you start imposing ordinances. Right. What, are your, what are your ideas though? Just some yeah, bring them up. I, I just really heard about all this. Right, me too. I just, this is yesterday for me. <laughs> so one idea that I have is that there might be somebody professionally who could impound these animals and keep them. Um, and then, of course, the, the uh, liability or the chance with the town is that, of course, we would be paying this person and we would be paying them to keep them impounded and we would probably not get a cent from this person at all. Exactly. There is, in state statute, um, you know, if we impound them, um, we're supposed to notify the owner that we have them and if they don't pay the fees um, after a certain number of days. Um, there was a different number of days mentioned in the statute, so I haven't figured out which one's right. The town would have the right to put them up to auction and sell them. Then we probably still wouldn't recover the money yeah. that we've spent. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's one option that we have. Um, the ordinance, you know, it's still, I, you know, the thing with the ordinance is that you can say all this. Right, you've got to have some way to, I got it. But there's no way of enforcing it. Yeah. Yeah. And there's civil penalties, sure, right. and if the person doesn't pay, then it just goes to the court, and three years later, you know. It's just, I mean, we could sit on it for two weeks and see what, if anything, changes, but. Um, well, it's not like the ordinance doesn't really work either. Well, that well it does. You've got to enforce it. But you have to enforce it. Yeah. It's hard to enforce these things. Um, oh, I know. The ordinance helps give us the person, the town, and the landowner or the person involved a sense of what is expected for compliance, you know, to be a good neighbor about the situation. Um, which most everybody does, which, which I most, tend to agree with you. I hate doing yeah, something that... 95% of the time, person, know you know, do. people, um, if, there, if there is something that happens and, and they're asked to fix something or whatever, people comply. But um, we do have instances in town where people have not complied with other parts of like the zoning ordinance or whatever, and, and the town's really helpless to do much about it. It just- well, it's sitting you know, in court. Yeah, it, it, it sits court. in court, right. And you know, two or three years from now, something might come of it. But, um, so yeah, it, it's frustrating. The, the ordinances are, are definitely not all that helpful. Um, well, I suppose we can sit on it for a couple of weeks and see to the next meeting if it improves. Mm -hmm. But my gut is that her attitude was really bad with me because right. I was just being polite and she started screaming at me and right. threatening me. And yep. Yeah, so there are. You said you went up and looked at the property? I haven't been up there yet. I was here when I didn't. I've seen the fence and everything. Can you tell me what 
Uh, have you noticed a lot of source for these horses? Yeah. I've, heard, I've heard fence, I've heard some feet, but I haven't heard anything about yeah, water Yeah, Kim, Kim did check that out. There is a water source. It's a pretty haphazard one um, where there's a, um, the neighbor across from the road, um, the woman who keeps the goats, collects rainwater to water her goats. Okay. Um, and apparently this woman is using some of that water to water the horses. <clears throat> so okay. there is a setup for- It's that field area just above where the barons lived. Yeah, right. yeah. And according to Kim, who in his conversation with this person, um, she stated that the horses will not be there this winter. She'll be boarding them somewhere. Maybe we can sit on so, it. Maybe she ought to do a silly. Well, um, yeah, maybe. Um, and she might, probably will be back in the spring. That's the thing. Um, That's right. But it, maybe so, if the slut boy started getting after her now to board her somewhere else, maybe she wouldn't think so much about bringing them back here in the spring. Yeah. yeah. You know, sometimes pressure is still. Yeah. Yeah. And Kim, Kim is going to be keeping an eye on it. And I. Um, I have been meaning to get up there and kind of take a look at the situation myself, um, but haven't made it, um, but probably will this week or this coming weekend. Um, and you know, Kim just kind of managed to bump into her when he went up to look at it on Saturday. And then of course, this incident happened yesterday and Kim was involved with that. Um, and apparently the woman um, headed off through the woods, uh, leading the horses back up to the, her property. Uh, Kim waited for her there for a while, um, and she didn't show up, and it was, you know, he had to kind of go and get some rest to get ready to go to work. Um, right. So. One of the biggest problems is all she does a cloth straight fence up there. Yeah. One yeah. Time. One, time. one time. One time. She yeah. told me she doesn't yeah. really believe in the fence. Yeah, that's what the, what the well, you're, you're, you're dealing with a, a yeah. philosophy with her. Yeah. She does not believe in <coughs> making it so the horses yeah, can't get out. The, the first well, time they got out, the house yeah. that they went to, it the took the lady over three morning. minutes oh. to pick up the horse dogs. Yeah. She's got two young daughters, she's got a dog, and the lady said, oh, it's good for your lawn. And they said, we don't want it on our lawn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she didn't even offer to clean up the mess that the horses made. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so we're dealing with a person that uh, thinks a little bit differently than most people do. Um, so getting you know any kind of reason or logic in, in her responses is, is probably um, more than we should expect. Um, so the, the, pers the owner themselves has proven to be a difficult person to deal with. Um, and that's been attested to by <laughs> people in Calus also. So, um, so yeah. I, we'll, I, I'm going to sit on it for a little while because okay. I tend to agree with, with Justin. I'm not a big fan of doing this, but mm -hmm. I just don't know what to do. And if someone's got ideas, I'm all ears to listen to right. it. Yeah. Other than that, I don't see you have any alternative to put something in place. I just don't know if this is mm -hmm. it or if something else is it. But. Yeah. All this research. Yeah, if you got some ideas, because I, I agree, I hate doing, hate, I hate putting something in for one incident, but sometimes they, they, you tie your hands with this stuff, because yeah. if the person just flat out refuses. Well, we did start working on a, a related ordinance when the, with the incident a few years ago with the, when the horses got out. And yeah, and that one was, see, that's my fear, is that if it comes in night, the last what happened last time, it was dark, and that was a, a, a responsible owner that yes. the horses got out. Which, I, any ordinance I'd be in favor would have to be, you can't deal with that, but. Right. Um, well, yesterday you were lucky it was a Sunday and not a Oh, Monday. I know. Mm -hmm. No kidding. Yeah. I mean, they could have been bugged on, on a vehicle. Yep. 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 They came right down. down. They, came they were walk. Right Gary right has the photos of them walking right in the middle of Route 14. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Oh yeah, they went right so, down into this place. Yeah, and if, you know, maybe if somebody did hit them, that then maybe the state would have gotten involved. Um, no, they left the horse right that's there. That's true. They made that's us true. deal with it. They, I finally got, I think Vtran showed up with a loader and pushed it to the side. Yep. I mean, it was, the state's awful. They won't do anything. Yeah, I forgot about they that. They said, well, it's on, it's, on the, it's on that side of the fog line. And so then I had to cover it with a tarp. And then they were yelling at me from the school because we left the horse there for the kids to see. And I got... Yeah. I can't move a horse. 
Yeah, yeah, they were like, I think someone came down here and gave me hell because we left that horse there. <laughs> okay. All right, so we'll just see what happens, I guess. Yeah, yeah. we'll just, and if you've got some ideas, you can find something to share here. That'd be awesome. Justin, do work? Do you need some work? Yeah, he, I'll work with Justin if he gets hold of me and I'll think of something. I just, yeah, I don't know. And I'll do a little bit of work too. And we'll see if we can find a way around. I mean, it's a, it's a process to get this in place anyway, so we'll, if we have to so do we something, we'll have to. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's going to take a lot of consideration. Well, because you got to have a public hearings and it's just a lot, of, it takes a while. Yeah, it won't happen. It won't happen in fact, the Callis ordinance um, is still not in place because it's going through the time, the time oh, constraints. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, good luck, you guys. I did spend about three hours chasing people on the phone about you this. You didn't yell that. I did. Yeah. I haven't met this person yet. So. It only took like two and a half minutes to get yelled at. It wasn't bad. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, uh, moving on. Um, so, the town hall, um, the folks. Uh, what's the name of the business? Eliminator, Pest Eliminator. Um, they came and did a, a looked up into the attic. Last was last Thursday. Someone came, um, and um, it pretty much it's pretty obvious to them. And once I was pointed out to me, the bats are getting in along the north side of the building. Um, apparently, when you look at the roof. The metal roofing on this side is all pretty much non-rusted, pretty fresh, and the fascia connects right up tight to the, um, to the roofing. When you look at the north side roof, it's all pretty rusty and older looking, and the fascia is kind of warped and pulled away. So that's how the bats are getting into the, um, the uh, uh, I don't really know if we'd call it an attic or not, but that, that's the term we'll use uh, to the space up there. So he went up um, with a big powerful flashlight and his iPhone and took some photos. There's not a lot of back guano there. It's kind of, um, you know, where they hang upside down, there's kind of these neat little conical piles all along, all along the ridge. Neat, huh? Neat. neat. Yes, very neat. So it, it's not like it's... No, it's, it's not really spread all over the surface up there. Just get up, get up there with a wet dry back and fix so that he, right he stated that they probably wouldn't really need to remove, and there's some blown in uh, insulation on top so of So could we just some, insulate right over it? Uh, no, we should oh. remove it, but he said it would be pretty easy to remove. Um, okay. So but they... We ought to seal up the holes before we... Well, that's what they would do. They would um, put in some um, one-way vents so the bats could get out but not get back in, and then they would do a temporary seal. The, the technician that came basically said that in order to solve the problem of the bats, you need to fix the roof and then redo the fascia. Okay. So, One good thing that would be, you know, after all that's fixed, you could put bat boxes up. In the right, to let Yeah, actually the neighbors have a bat have box some, yeah. right over there on the side of the wall. Yeah. Yeah. So we could put that as part of the budget when they're working on this plan, right? Yeah, the some bad boxes. The, well, the, yeah. but the but the the soffit and the cleanup mm -hmm. and all. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So they so this this group uh, contractor, the pest eliminator folks, they would do a temporary fix to seal it up. It would basically be some hardware cloth over the the openings, and and then they strongly recommended that the ultimate fix is to uh, repair, replace that part of the roof, and 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 fix the fascia. Yeah. So. And they, they, he was going to send me an estimate. I haven't received it yet. So, so it's not um, as bad as we thought then. No, it isn't. No, it's not that bad. Um, so that's pretty And I did call one other uh, company, a local hardware company, um, who will clean it out, but they don't do anything to uh, Stop solve it. the problem. Right. You've got to solve the problem to be right back in there. Yeah. 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 So yeah. kind of leaning towards these pest eliminator yeah. folks because they would do solve both problems in, in one one stop. Um, but we'll, we'll see. We'll they get must some. have a really skinny person to crawl down in there. To <laughs> Eve to... Well, if he ain't, he will be able to yeah. come down. Right. Well, the, 
Not a lot of room. The bats seem to be kind of <laughs> roosting along, not too far in from where they come in. No, but so. to get that that uh, wire cloth down in the. Oh yeah, I think they would kind of press it in yeah, from the outside. Oh, from outside. Okay, yeah. I was going to yeah. say because it's not going to be a very fun job. No. 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 All right. Well, we'll wait till get the estimate from them and see uh, see what that'll come to. Um, any other questions about that at all? Okay. Um, so updates and other business. The um, town plan. Um, it did uh, go out. It's kind of had its official posting. Um, it was sent to the neighboring towns for them to review. Um, it's on the town website, and I think there are copies available at the town office for people. To review comments are coming in um, um, based on you know different town residents so reading the plan there will be another uh, official hearing on October 18th here at the town hall um, for um, what's basically a, a final hearing um, with at least within the town um, regarding the town plan um, and then, Lindsay sent me the notice today. Okay. So I can send it out to the four newspapers that we okay. have it posted. Yeah. Okay. And I see it posted up around town. So. Um, and then, um, any questions about that at all? Well, the only thing I had, I'd, I had some town residents share concerns, and I'd ask mm -hmm. them to respond with their concerns in writing. So is uh, right. That's are we are we going to receive those things? Those comments right now are being received. By the planning commission, basically, Skip Lindsay is, okay. is as far well, as I know, is receiving. Would we them. receive them to see them before we were asked to vote on it? Yeah, there, there will be. Um, that's, the, that's, that's the way it's designed. Yeah, it's a. Okay, public. yeah, because I hadn't seen any of them. That's why I said I think I just well, if you have, make sure you get send them in writing because that right. way we can review them. Yeah, yeah. No, there's um, the planning commission is keeping a list of the different comments from the last hearing that we had and the one the ones that are coming in. Um, now and part of part of the process is to respond to um, the different people that sent comments in. My concern is we we ultimately have to vote on this. I just we I do, want to yeah. be able to read these yeah. comments as yeah. long as we're going to see. Yeah, them. no, it's public. It'll be part of the process. So. Yeah. Um, anything else about that? Okay, so. Um, <coughs> We had talked last time about sending out the uh, RFP for the audit, um, and there was an email from Diana um, uh, that I found when I got home today from work, and she had a, a, another proposal. Um, rather than um, sending out the audit for uh, different companies to respond to, she mentioned that um, there are like there's like a town clerk um, kind of. Uh, email tree and um, and then also another way of you know soliciting from other towns similar in size to Woodbury um, who do hire out the audit how much they're paying so you know she was I think the the main reason that we wanted to send this out is to get a sense of how much it would cost the town um, so that we could budget for it if if um, if a town meeting people in town, um, you know, did decide that they would prefer the town to have a professional audit as opposed to, uh, you know, auditors that are elected each, each uh, year. So it would be one way for us to get a relative sense of what it would cost the town. I remember when we sent the RFP out before, uh, Wolcott, I think they pay, um, it was about ten or $13,000 a year. Um, Years. Yeah, three years. Yeah, for three years. So we have some ballpark figures that would allow us to to put an item in the budget if if we felt that we wanted to do that, um, and also a ballpark figures that we could present to town residents at town meeting on what this would cost if town residents did uh, choose by voting to um, go to this process with a professional auditor as opposed to. Um, you know, having uh, people elected to the position to do that work. The people that we can't elect. So here, here's, yeah. the, here's, here's yeah. the issue I have. Okay. Uh, this body has twice 
directed the um, thing to go out. Mm -hmm. And we have one individual that keeps not doing it. Well, it's not one individual. I think, um, you know, the last time we directed to have this go out, um, somebody did volunteer. I think what this one individual is actually just trying to save the town a little initial money to get the answers that we want. I have no objecting, objection to sending it out if that's what the... No, no, you're going to listen to my question. You have one person stopping what the board asked to at least get it ready to send it out. Am I missing? I don't think they have stopped it. They have suggested an alternative route that we did take but, out. But it hasn't gone out for two, no. two different... No. Meeting cycle. That's all I'm getting at. It's like, right. um, yeah. if that's what we want. And so, and really, then there's two questions here. Number one is, are we going to do a, a professional audit? The second one is, would we change that to be the permanent process? You know what I'm saying? So we could right. still do the professional audit, whether or not we decided to move forward with um, changing the process. And the t you see, what we're getting at. Yeah. So there's I really mean, two questions there. Yeah. The. Um, I think there's the question, no cost associated with getting the RFP out to see what the money would be. No, just the advertising cost. Right. Yeah. That's all I'm getting at. It just yeah. Um, does it? I don't want to speak out of here, but doesn't it seem like Diana should be most of Robin and she's I, I that was just that's what I was trying to share with the other board members was that yeah, she, I'm just a little I mean, frustrated. It's ridiculous that she's well, not the clerk person anymore. Right. right. She did, she sent this to me as an email, um, just a suggestion to the select board member, which I'm sharing with you. Um, the first time around, um, I think that she did find someone else to volunteer as an auditor. Um, sure. So just to kind of help us in the bind of needing to do an audit for the fiscal year 21 and not having enough auditors to do it and really not having enough time I mean, that needs to <coughs> actually get the RFP out. We, yeah. we all knew that last yeah. time. So that was just a suggestion, you know, and she took the initiative to get that other person to volunteer as an auditor. Um, and what, you know, we had asked that the RFP go out. I, I don't know how Robin and Brandy, you know, it didn't go out. Um, no one, I didn't instruct anyone, uh, Robin or Brandy, to not send it out. So I don't know what kind of dialogue you had with Diana that, that you, you know, maybe decide not to send it out. Um, and this time again, it was just a suggestion that came to me uh, this evening, this afternoon when I got home from work and I'm just sharing it with folks. It's, a, it's just another, um, it would be a way of getting the information. If, you know, Diana's email did say, if you just need a ballpark figure in order to for budgeting purposes for next fiscal year and to present at town meeting to people. This would be a way of getting that information um, without having to send out the RFP. Um, I, but you know, we could do both. Um, we could send out the RFP, see what kind of response we get. Because we, we had discussed in our last meeting of going ahead and doing this audit, right. even like January, February, and they could do it because it needs to be it done. It just needs to be done. It's we That's what we've heard for a number of years from the previous auditors. Yeah, we thought we feel like it, it's it's been necessary for years, right? Well, the the catch is is that we haven't budgeted, and the and the budget. It was turned down. We had tried to to, and it was turned down to go out for. Correct. No, the first time, the first time we put out an RFP a few years ago, we had it was in the working budget that we had. Developed, and then there was some other items that came in um, onto the budget that they were pretty significant, yeah. and we just decided that this was too much; it would increase the taxes too much, so we dropped it. Um, the thing and, is, is finding finding an accounting firm that wants to take it on, and then the other thing is, when we did go up with the RFP, we got one back for eighteen thousand locked in for three years. Yes, yeah. it is. A big expense. It's a big expense. Mm -hmm. yeah. For reassurance, and it all depends on the town what they feel is, is criteria enough. That's why it would be good to have this be a discussion at town meeting and to have the town residents decide on whether or not we would do this. Um, and you know, with that RFP, we did we got one response. The company that did respond is does a lot of 
auditing for other towns, so they definitely had the experience to do it. Um, but it was, it was a chunk of money. Yes. Um, so, um, and we can send the RFP out and see what, kind of what it costs now. Right, I don't think there's any harm in there's, doing that. And we can decide if we want to do it. With an RFP. No, there was. Because so, even, even with the voter, one way or the other, but this body has the fiduciary responsibility to oversee mm -hmm. the town funds the town and make funds. sure that it's been done. Right. You know, if our, our process is proper, because yeah. again, I, I separate these to two questions. One is, should we do a professional audit in the next 12 months, which is separate and apart from, does yeah. the town want to move forward in doing this every mm -hmm. year? See, mm -hmm. see, that's kind of the way I yeah, look at okay. this issue. We get the thing and say it's twenty thousand bucks and only give us three. Oh, well, that's probably no, no, not going to happen. But right. um, if they come in at a reasonable number and they're going to do it once, I don't care if it happens in the next twelve months, as long as we did it. You know. Yeah. So, so if we did this, then um, the audit, that professional audit that would happen, it um, would be for fiscal year twenty two. Two. At the end of that fiscal year, that's, I think it's too late for fiscal year twenty. There's no way we can do twenty. Right, the, the, the town auditors have to do this past yes. fiscal year, correct? Yeah. So yeah. the RFP that was typed up for the first round, it needs to be needs revised. To be tweaked, yeah. State that okay. we don't need it done for the summer, and then it can be sent out. Yeah. Okay. Does and it, it's it's my I didn't do the tweaking on that, so it's basically my fault. Well, it was no fault. I wasn't trying to blame you. No, no, I, I know. But I totally forgot about because it's it's not like it's a pressing issue. We got to wait for the twenty two budget to finish. So if we had it done before next, you know, next town yeah. meeting or with November or December, we'd have it done. That's that's yeah. kind of my thought. Is that yeah. I think we ought to move forward. That that whole other issue of are we going to change the town's auditor structure and do this every year? Question. That's a town. That's an issue yeah. we have to have that conversation. Yeah. Okay. Are we going to put that on the town yeah. meeting articles? Which mm -hmm. I think we do need to do that and let the voters make that decision. If they okay. say no, then they've got to step up and become auditors. Mm -hmm. But even if we have auditors, I think it makes sense every, every five years, years or so many years to do a professional audit just to make yeah. sure yeah. that we're where we're supposed to be. Because yeah. that you know we. You run into mistakes usually innocently. You just do the same thing over and over, and it becomes institutional. And you don't realize that you you did something wrong until yeah. someone tells you. And yeah. we're we're more than a decade out. Right? It's been a long time. It's, we've never had an outside audit. Yeah, I, just, so I think it's time. So it's yeah, getting it's a little bit silly. Yeah, for us not. Cause, to yeah, because even if we to, delay to that audit until after July first, we can budget for that. We can budget for that. Mm -hmm. So it's getting a little bit ridiculous that we've never yeah. had a professional. Yeah. But we'll have a number if we put it out, if we just want it before our budget, which would be the end of December, we just yeah. need to have that I yeah. think number just, we can decide if we do. If it's a lot of money, we probably wouldn't, but yeah. well, but we need to I mean we need to we learn what that number is. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's time for the RFP to go out. Yep. Okay. And we so would say we wouldn't do it till after next that, July first, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That okay. would be for fiscal year um, right. 22. 22. Regardless Actually, of which 22. way the town goes on auditors and, or yeah. professional. We're in, we're in fiscal year 22 right now. We're in 22 right now. So we're in FY22, yeah. Right so yeah. So we wouldn't do the audit till after July, after so June 30th. If we, if we, hypothetically, we get a company, they may go back and do a year yeah. and then go forward. That could be. Um, yeah. okay. so well, typically it's a three year contract. Well, not always. And yeah. what happens? We'll definitely learn when we send it out. Right. Yeah. Right. We'll find out. Okay. So we'll. Um, I've been told I'm an idiot before when I send something out. And we'll just okay. I do. I was like, so if anything, that was at eighteen thousand dollars for three years, each year. Yeah. Lock in for three years. Sure. And if anything, it's gone up from then. So. Well, I'm sure it's gone. When do you get well? Now, RFP three was two years. Three two or years. Two years. Three years. Yeah. yeah. Two or three years. Two or three years. Two or three years. Two or three years. Yeah. Two, at least three years. Yeah. We'll just find out. I know. Skip. Skip was still on the select board, and he's... There's no way to know. Yeah, it was prior to me getting here. So yeah. I'll be three, three, three years in March. There's, there's no way to know until we send it. Right. right. It may be too much, and we'll have to put that through to the voters, which we'll know before right. December. We'll know before December. It's probably going to be around 20 grand at this point, I think. Yeah. But at some point, you know, I think it's our responsibility to see the mm -hmm. potential problem and deal with it. Or and deal with it. They'll be talking to us about why we didn't do it next. Yeah. And one of the reasons we'll cut, I mean, with we'll cut having it done professionally every year, it's, you know, when you... Just do it once in a while. There's a lot more work involved. Right, for the you don't have the structure there. Yeah, yeah. So one of the benefits we do it once, and you have all that structure. Yeah. Yeah. Would you have to have that base around Yeah. If we don't have any town residents who are willing to actually step up and do it, well, we're kind of left without without a lot having of to do it that way. Yeah, right. So that's why I think the two issues just separate them, and I think yeah. we'll. 
to me, it's definitely put that before, you know, the will we do this moving forward? That should be the voters' it's, decision. It's but if they vote no, my question is going to be then who's stepping up? Because right. it can't be us. Well, I, I think one thing, too, is we need to make it known to all the taxpayers. It is known every yeah. time they vote. Yeah. Where there's no people. Nobody steps up. No one steps up to we actually. Yeah, yeah. And okay. We just yeah. had, not by a Zoom, not by a, a, a ballot, but it's always on there. Right. But what I'm getting at is have you seen how many people show up? No, I got it. My, my same friend. But, but how do you get engage them in the process again? I don't know how to do that. So we've reached out, we've reached out via like every resource that we can to everybody who we can reach out to to ask for people who can stand up to audit. For the year, right, and, and we got to zero. It's something like that. We got one. You want somebody that's in that field? You don't want just anybody saying, "Yeah, I'll do it." Well, right. actually, right. at this point, that would work. Yeah, it would actually. It would. Because yeah. what the new system but, might do is you still have auditors, but they they basically oversee the professional audit, so there's a lot less work. So they might actually volunteer because I think the fear is the amount of work. Amount of work. It's a lot of work. Or so it doesn't really know what. Right. But the it's reality is, we still have to move on. You don't hire a company yeah. to come to your yeah. Exactly. <laughs> no, no, we hear you exactly. You know, just so you, your point's well made. Your point's well still, made. If you have no volunteers, what are you supposed to do? No, and I get that. And I, personally, I think we should hire somebody that knows what they're doing. It's from an outside entity. That's kind of what I'm thinking. So there's no conflict of interest. I think that we all I think we all agree. Kind of agree. Mm -hmm. But we'll put that, I mean, by law, we got to put that before the voters. Because the they would have to change the rules, which is right. what we'd have to do at town meeting. So, yeah, your point's well taken. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, we need to figure out a way to get people to come to town meeting. Yeah. I think one good place to start is I went on a weekend. Towns have tried that, and it didn't seem to make much of a difference. I'm game for it. It should be a state holiday. holiday. We don't, we don't, we, yeah, I, I agree. I feel like it is a state holiday. Yep. People should have the day off and they should be, you know, free to go to town meeting. And yeah. unfortunately, that's not a thing. It's not anymore. <laughs> no. 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 Is so, it stated somewhere that your pre town meeting has to be the Thursday before town meeting? No. Or could no. you actually move that to a Saturday? So that yeah. people could come and give their input. You could, yeah, could be any time. Any yeah. suggestion. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Justin, he'll be an auditor. He told me he'd be an auditor. Well, yes, I do is put his <laughs> name in. If, he does, <laughs> if you leave the room for five minutes, you'll be an auditor. It's not too great a big trouble, man. But I know, like, something like that, like, I gotta take a day out. I don't want it because I don't get paid for it. Right, but right. right. You're, you're, you know, That's if true. we move it to a Saturday, does it really matter? I mean, you might have get more people. Town, towns, towns have done that, um, and in general, it hasn't made much of a difference. Towns have tried having it in the evening, um, and that didn't seem to make much difference either. Um, so, but yeah, that's something that we could that we could look at. Um, I know um, Jane Noel Lorendow has talked about uh, her experiences in Northfield, where they were experimenting with a town meeting and. It seemed like no matter what they did, it the same number of people came. It didn't really make a whole lot of difference. So. Well, I mean, in an area like this too. I mean, what I find when people move out to an area like this, for a couple of reasons: low taxes, the seclusion, or even being yeah, we'll away from the traffic. Most people just want to be left alone yep. mm -hmm. to live yep. their lives. Yep. Yep. That's true. And so, you know, um, if, so they don't come to town meeting. So what do you do? You know, it didn't, wouldn't matter what time you have it or if you... Um, no, I get, so. I get that, but you at least try. Yeah. In a way, I think, you know, from my experience, when I first moved into town, you know, we used to have the town meeting here, and we had so many people that we moved up to the gym. So in a way, we have... We have expanded. We, it's, have, it's we have a good number of people. Anywhere from 120 to 180 people now, which used to, wouldn't fit in this room at all. Yeah. So, for you know, percentage-wise, I think per capita, Woodbury does okay with the participation it has. But other towns, you know, it, I think it is quite a bit less. Um, but, uh, but that but being a pre-town meeting on a weekend, and that we're still doing our Australian ballot, you know, we're getting people lined up who wants, you know, here's everybody with a chance to go. It's on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Who wants to be an auditor? And then everybody can fill in their, their ballot. Or who wants to be a slippery 
Yeah, right now we're stuck. They haven't changed any laws. We have to have no, a meeting no. right now, so yeah. there's no Australian ballot no this Australian year. Because no. no. the legislature hasn't changed anything. No. So if you were to change the pre-town meeting or the town meeting, can you as the board change that? Or does that have to be to, put in front of the voters? I think to change the actual day of the town meeting, like from the Tuesday to uh, Saturday, I think that would have to be voted on it. Yeah, and the, the town voters meeting. have to change it. <laughs> um, the pre-town meeting, you know, that can happen. Yeah, 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 and we just set that ourselves. And trying it on a Saturday would be good. You know, we might want to even do it a couple of weeks ahead of time. So if there were needs for different positions, which there always is, um, people have a little bit of time to think about it. Um, rather than having it a few days beforehand. Um, so, yeah, we, we can keep a discussion going on about that. Um, and I, I can check and see, but I think that for us to actually change the day, um, we would need to... It has uh, to go before the town. It would have to go before so. the town, yeah. yeah. Some, some towns do have their town meeting on town meeting day in the evening. Um, Bristol used to have theirs Monday nights. I don't know if they still the Monday night before town meeting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and some some towns have kind of given up on town meeting and just do Australian ballot and then they have this sort of pre town meeting. Um, sort of like, you know, well what we did last we did year was by Zoom. Yeah. yeah. Um, you can't even do that now because the laws have to change. Mm -hmm. Right. Until, yeah, unless, if you have a Zoom meeting, you still got to have a live, like even this board meeting, we'd have to have someone yeah, here so, in this room different. so people could participate live. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so maybe a Saturday pre town meeting would be a good idea. I think that's a good idea. We could try that. I'm willing. Yeah. It's probably, I think it's reasonable. We'll someone could bring it. cookies, that'd be good. Yeah. Pie or something. <laughs> brownies, I like brownies. Yeah. <laughs> You well, you can make it a little, little make it a little more fun. <laughs> so people get ornery, just have some cookies. And have a that. <laughs> you chew it, you won't be able to yell. <laughs> so, um, is there any other business or anything more about? I've got nothing else. Yeah. I'm good. Good. Okay. So um, the next thing on the agenda is for the select board to go into executive session, um, and we'll invite um, Chuck to join us. Um, do I hear a motion to that effect? I'll make that motion. Motion seconded. Okay. Um, any discussion about that at all? Do I need to cite 21 VSA 313 right. 3A3 yeah. employee employer relationships? No. Um, so all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. So um, we will be going into executive session. Um, We'll give everybody a few minutes to pack up and...